Hello, my name is Jason Murray and I'm an architecture consulting engineer with Cisco Systems. This is the third in a five-part video series which walks you through the initial setup of UCS to get you to the point where you can install UC on UCS. If you watched the previous two videos in this series, you know that UCS takes some prep time to get set up. But after that initial setup, configuring servers could be any easier with the use of service profiles. You can have the servers built in a matter of minutes rather than hours using these service profiles. In this video, I will go through the service profile creation and apply that service profile to the server. So let's get started. Service profile creation is done under the Servers tab. To start creating a new service profile, I'm going to right click on Service Profiles and choose Create Service Profile Expert. Now that brings up a wizard that will walk me through creating this new service profile. I'll give this profile a name. And then under UUID, I'm going to go ahead and choose Hardware Default. And then I'll click Next. Now for local storage policy, I'm going to go ahead and create a specific storage policy. And then my mode, which is my RAID configuration, I'm going to go ahead and choose RAID 1 Mirrored. Next, I'm going to configure my SAN connectivity. For that, I'm going to choose Expert. And then for Worldwide No Name, I'm going to go ahead and pull from the pool that I created earlier. Next, I'm going to scroll down and add my HBA. I'm going to go ahead and put in a name for it. And then my port name I'm going to choose as well from a pool that I created earlier. And it's asking me now for my fabric ID. If I choose A, it's only going to show me the vSANs created under A. In this case, vSAN 77. If I chose B, it'll only show me vSAN 88 because that's all it's configured. For now, I'm going to click choose A and choose vSAN 77. The rest of these I'm going to go ahead and leave as default. I'm not going to configure it. I'm going to click OK. And here you can see my newly created HBA. So I'm going to click Next for networking. I'm going to leave the policy as so. I'm going to click Expert. And then I'll come down here and click Add to Add a VNIC. I'm going to give it a name, and then a MAC address assignment, I'm going to choose it out of a pool I created earlier. I'm going to leave it going through Fabric A, but I'm going to go ahead and enable failover just in case Fabric A goes away. Then I'm going to choose my VLAN, which is 199, as I created earlier. And the rest of these, I'm going to go ahead and leave as default. And click OK. And here's my newly created VNIC. I'm going to click Next. And I can choose a placement of my HBA and NIC. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as default and hit Next. I'll go ahead and create a boot policy to use. And then I'll add a local disk and a CD-ROM. This is the order of which it's going to boot the server from. So let's say if you want a CD-ROM first, I can click on that and move up. And now it'll boot off the CD-ROM first instead of a local disk. Now server assignment. Right now I can go ahead and choose a server that I want to apply this service profile to if I wanted to by selecting a server here and choosing a server from the list but right now I'm going to go ahead and sign it later and show you how to apply it in a moment and finally we come to operational policies these are additional things you can add to the server's profile for now I'm just going to leave everything as default and that's it that's all there is to creating a server's profile so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and sign that server's profile to a server to do that, I'm going to right click on Service Profile and I'm going to scroll down to Service Profile Association. 
for server assignment, I'm going to drop down and use select existing server. And then I'm going to choose a server out of chassis 2. And then click OK. And now my server's profile is attached to this server. I can watch the process by going to the FSM tab. Now this process can take upwards to about five minutes. To save you from having to sit here and watch the whole thing, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to when the association is complete. Okay, it's been about five minutes and association is complete. Let's go to the general tab and go to the KVM console to check out, see how the server's doing. So seeing this message, it tells me that everything worked as it should and is now ready to have an operating system installed on it. The next video in this series, that's what I'm going to do. I'll walk through getting VMware installed on this server. Until then, thanks for watching and always thanks for choosing Cisco.